one single staff in the hand of a shepherd was used by God as an instrument to do great signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. That rod would have been one of the wonders of the world if it was preserved through the generations. Why did the Lord not rather command Moses to keep the rod in the ark like that of Aaron's? What really happened to the rod of Moses? Why was it not kept at least as a memorial for all the wonders through which it was done? If you watch through to the end of this video, you will discover why God had to do away with that rod, and it did not stay beyond Moses. You will be shocked to know that the rod was not even in God's plan for Moses from the beginning. This video will uncover a lot of lessons from the Holy Spirit for the believer who want to walk in God's will and to please Him always. The Lord met Moses at Mount Horeb after 40 years that he ran away from Egypt. Moses, in a failed attempt to rescue his people from slavery in Egypt, had fled, on knowing that his act of murdering an Egyptian was no longer a secret. He fled to Media and settled with Jethro, a priest of the land. He became a shepherd, and on one of his routine activities on feeding the herd, he saw an unusual sight. It was a burning bush. The fire was all over the bush, but the bush remained green and fresh. Amazed by the sight, Moses turned aside to behold the surprise. As he turned, one called him out of the burning bush. It was the Lord. It was the Lord coming to accomplish the transaction that Moses attempted to carry out 40 years ago. The Lord had one assignment for Moses. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Exodus 3 or 10. God told him to return to the Egypt he fled from, but this time sent by him. He will come out with the children of Israel. Moses recalling his failure 40 years earlier, and how Pharaoh sought after his life. He knew the difficulty of the task that lies ahead. He will not go as the same Moses. He needed more than just what God told him. The Lord assured him that his presence will go with him. That would have been enough. God with him. After all, what will be the rod if the Lord was not with him? What will he have done even with any physical weapon in the absence of the Lord God? Even the magicians of Egypt whom he will now face can even turn their rods into a serpent. God's offer of his presence was not enough for Moses. That was understandable at the beginning of his walk with God. Moses was meeting God for the very first time. The Lord had introduced himself as the God of his fathers, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Lord had even revealed his name Jehovah to Moses, the name which his fathers did not know. But Moses was not satisfied. Experiential knowledge of God brings trust. The same Moses, after months of walking with God and experiencing his wonders, will demand for nothing else for their journey except the presence of God. That was what God offered him only. Moses will later tell the Lord in Exodus chapter 33 verses 15. If your presence go not with us, carry us not us from here. But at this first encounter, he needed to go with extra proofs. His faith needs help. He needed some visible evidence to convince his people and Pharaoh himself that he had the backing of the Almighty. After several questions to which the Lord had given him answers to and all that he should tell the people, the Lord told him of all the wonders he will do and how his people will come out triumphantly. The Lord told him what will happen through their journey till they all meet with him in that same wilderness where he was speaking with Moses. Moses unsatisfied even with all what the Lord explained said in the next chapter. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. Exodus 4 verses 1. How did he know they will not believe? A better question would have been, what if they did not believe? Moses had only concluded that all what the Lord was saying will not do any good. If the Lord had promised to God with Moses, is it not his duty to convince the people? But that was the voice of unbelief speaking through Moses. The same is always true in our case in preaching the gospel and obeying God's instructions. We oftentimes conclude like Moses, they will not believe. Our job description is not to convince sinners, Rather, we are to share the gospel of truth with them. The heart that will not believe will not even if we speak all the words and present the best argument to them. It is the Holy Spirit working with the truth that brings conviction and repentance. It is the Holy Spirit who imparts faith into the heart of men to believe the word of salvation. 
Moses, like us, needed more. God's response to Moses after such conclusion is very revealing. It shows that God had no intentions to involve the rod in all of these. He had no intentions that Moses will put his faith or part of his faith on an ordinary staff. He had wanted Moses to trust in his word only and go in his name. At this point, God needed to help the faith of Moses, who was about to begin a walk with him. And the Lord said, What is that in thine hand? To which Moses responded, A rod. The Lord instructed him to cast it to the ground, and when he did, it became a serpent. This was another way of telling Moses, You don't actually need the rod. Anything in your hand can become at my word. It was God showing him the power of his preceding word. God was showing Moses his word and not the rod. The rod had been in his hands for years, and he had often cast it to the ground at will, but it never became anything. But now, at God's speaking, the same dead rod was made alive. It had nothing to do with the rod, but the word that came from God. Yet Moses will not rest upon the word, but would rather cling to the rod and keep it as one of his proofs of God. He did not even reason that the only time the rod become useful is when God gave instructions that require Moses to use it. Every other time, the rod is as any other stick or piece of wood. The Lord told him again to put his hand in his bosom, and on doing that, his hand became leprous. These were actions and things that Moses was used to, but now he is doing them following God's instructions. The same Lord, when he showed up at the lake of Gennesaret, where Peter had toiled all night but caught no fish, the preceding word came again. Launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. Peter, who knew all their fruitless toils through the night and how they had gone through the lengths and depth of the lake, he knew there was nothing to catch. He had to do it only for the sake of the word that Christ spoke. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. The same Peter, the same net, and the same lake, but now different result because of the word. This was all God wanted Moses to see. He wanted him to lay hold on the source of the miracles and not the instruments. But Moses will rather cling to the instrument. He even wanted more even after the Lord had showed him three signs. At this point, he knew the Lord had destroyed all his arguments through his signs and wonders. He was not looking for signs again. At this point, he turned to himself and searched out for his own weakness and presented it as an excuse to the Lord. The Lord became angry with Moses though he was still determined to use Moses by his mercy, and so he did not give up on him. The Lord had to give him a spokesman, Aaron his brother. The same Aaron will be a torn to his flesh, and will aid Israel into idolatry in the absence of Moses. The use of the same rod outside God's instructions will stop him from going into the Promised Land. May we go with God's provisions only. May the Lord not give us an alternative to his perfect will, because of our unbelief. After the entire conversation, Moses was ready to go. Do you know the first thing he held and parted with? The rod. Twice he called it the rod of God. But all the place the Lord mentioned it, he will always refer to it as thy rod, referring to Moses. To Moses it was God's, but to God it was the property of Moses. In Exodus chapter 17 verse 5 and verse 9, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee of the elders of Israel. And thy rod, wherewith thou smotest the river, take in thine hand, and go. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out, men, and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. Funny it sounds. But God will still want to deal with Moses in order for him to grow beyond the use of the rod. When they came to the wilderness of Zin, and there was no water for the people to drink, the people began to blame Moses, and Moses sought God who gave him an instruction. What happened after brought an end to the rod, and it was never mentioned. Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord, as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank, 
and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believed me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them, a very costly act that will stop Moses from entering the promised land. He was to take the rod and not to use it, maybe to test where his heart will always tilt to. He was only to speak to the rock, but Moses smote the rock, and that rock was Christ. He became so used to the rod that he missed the details of the word. He used the rod to smite the rock. That was the end of the rod. The Bible never mentioned anything else concerning the rod of Moses. Moses himself will learn the lesson the hard way, what God had been trying to teach him to put his faith on his word only. He had so used the rod that he could not do anything in God's name without involving that piece of wood. And that is how idolatry begins. Idolatry is not only when people carve a piece of wood or item and worship it. No. When we stick to a particular means of reaching the Lord, it is idolatry. When one thing work and we make it a pattern and no longer flexible to new revelations of the ways of God, it is idolatry. When we uphold our systems, methods and church tradition above the word of God, it is idolatry. Like Moses, when we are not ready to hold any other thing but the rod, because God had used it once, we forget that it is the word that gives life, is not what, but at whose instructions and commands. The way the rod ended was to teach us that after all, the Lord did not need it from the beginning. Our faith should be on the word. John 1 verse 1 shows us that, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word was all God needed, and that is all what God is. God is not more, and he does not need more than the word, to do all that he wants to do. He is the word. He does not want us to add or remove from the instructions of his word. Even when he uses anything in our hands, let us remember that it is his word that can make anything or anyone become. God bless you for watching to the end. If you have subscribed to my channel, I want to thank you specially. And if you are yet to subscribe, please do so. Thank you.